Tonight I'm going to talk about Christ. We can identify two meanings for that word. One is Christ is in Jesus Christ, the figure in the Christian Gospels. The other usage would be Christ consciousness. So in a sense, one of these is a local label. It's restricted to Christianity. It talks about a figure in Christianity. And the other would be a more global, universal label that talks about a state of consciousness. And we might suppose that that state of consciousness is available, potentially, to any conscious, intelligent being. So if we suppose that, then this becomes the reality, and this is a mere label. So, for instance, just as we have this stuff, which we call water in English, but here's a bunch of other labels in other languages, we would have this state of consciousness, which can be referred to this way or this way. Here's an Islamic word, a Buddhist word, a Hindu word. But if they're all the same state, if they're all the same state, and these are just different labels, then we could say that religion converges to an objective reality, at least in this case. So here's some background. In this episode, I talked about how science converges, how science uncovers a single objective reality. For instance, if you asked a chemist in Italy, Iran, or India what's going to happen if you mix certain chemicals, you'll get the same answer, because science is in contact with reality. But if you ask the spiritual leader in India, Italy, or Iran, what happens after death, you'll get three different answers. Even within Christianity, as I mentioned in this episode, Christianity has uh, hundreds of denominations, and many of them contradict other denominations. Uh, in other words, Christianity has contradictory ways of salvation. And if they're contradictory, they can't all be true. Some of them must be fantasies. Some of them must be wrong. So my criticism here is that religion does not converge to reality. And in this episode, I talked about the perennial philosophy and the concept of a highest common denominator in religions. And direct experience of uncreated light is, is the way I describe this highest common denominator. And that experience is essentially indescribable. But it happens in what is called contemplation. In the East, that's called meditation. And this is this field of mysticism. Mysticism has to do with direct experience of God, however God is conceived to be. And I mentioned this book by Aldous Huxley. Now the idea is, if all of these terms are describing the same state of consciousness, then religion is converging, at least in this instance. It's converging to an objective reality. And if it is, then we could say that this is religion's common core. All of these labels are saying essentially the same thing. And I'll add that some religions claim to lead us to this kind of consciousness on earth, for some of us. It isn't easy, but these religions talk about achieving this state of consciousness on earth. And I would say that that's religion's highest function, if this is true. Uh, leading us to uh, direct experience of the ultimate ground of existence, I would consider religion's highest function. Now, if we accept all this, and there's been a bunch of ifs along the line, but if we accept all this, then a natural question would be, could the natural theology we're developing do the same thing? And my answer is, not yet. I mentioned a long time ago in this episode how what we're doing here is constructing like the intellectual backbone of a theology. And it might take time for the tree to bear fruit, fruit being solace in time of pain and doubt and various benefits that religion give, that religions give people. And I also mentioned in that episode that that makes us in some sense pioneers going into new territory and um, trying to construct a, a new theology. Will natural theology ever be able to give us those fruits of religion, comfort in times of sorrow? I don't know. I'd like to think it will, will eventually, 
but in reality I don't know. So stay tuned and let's see. Thank you.